the, the retaining the sexual purity is the same as the thing we talked about with the, about the desireless nature, where the lower desires transform into the higher desires, where the sexual energy that wants the all the pleasures moves into the higher expression. So, you know, all the ideas of sexuality and all that kind of just really dissolve, you know, sexual urges and all that stuff just dissolves and dissolves and dissolves because it's transforming into a higher flame, a higher expression. So the, the, it, so the reemergence with innocence uh, comes online. Right? It, it, it becomes uh, stronger and stronger and stronger as the, the, the depth of the sexual trauma heals and you know the, the lustful movements of sexuality and all the seduction aspects of sexuality, all of that, that is all in natural. That's all in unnatural. That is not a natural program for angelic uh, and uh, identities. Right. And there's a quote I'm, I'm writing. I'm writing a piece right now. I'm just going to read this. This is a teaching from an elder that I, I don't even know who or I think I remember, but I forget his name. It was a long time ago. But it was an individual sharing a teacher of an elder, an unknown elder. And that, that teaching was basically this. Treat those of similar age as your brother and sister those of younger age as your daughter or son, and those of older age as your mother or father. Because if we're treating everyone like this as family, then the, the room for the seduction, the room for the lustfulness, the, the room for all those sexual programs, those distorted sexual programs are not going to be there. Um, and that takes time to, to reprogram that, right? And then you could say, well, okay, but where's the room for like a partner or some sort of type of relationship like this right firstly if you haven't explored lengths of time where this has been done then that's not really even something that should be considered because the the dynamic of platonic relationship of uh, friendship true friendship uh, has to emerge so that there can be a clear sight of who or what is in true resonance to the soul being so that so that a partnership or that type of thing, you know, romantic or whatever that term is, but sexual connection comes, but, it, but it's coming from this very strong foundation. So if that hasn't been the default mode, then, you know, that is what's to be fostered, right? So it's only really then that the conversation of, okay, well, who's a resonance is a partnership, because then it'll be so obvious, really. You know, because if, if if everyone's been is being treated in these formats as a you know as a family member essentially, then it'll be way clearer as to who a, a true connection or someone that you feel that real resonance with versus it being a product of a mixture of lustful thoughts and you know trauma and you know like all the things, the fantasies, so the princess or the Disney princess or prince and the romantic fantasies, all that all that stuff just kind of construes things and makes things kind of weird. Um, so it's not a black or white thing. It's not like you just become perfect and then you're ready to receive your whatever, but on some level it kind of is because at every stage of soul body integration, there will be stages of particular partners or stages maybe of a twin or an energy of that, of a soul resonance that will come in. Um, and so, yeah, on some level, yeah, you have to be ready to receive that, right? So I really like this piece, this, this teaching. Yes, yeah, it's a reemergence of purity and essence. If you had no idea what sex was, that's the way you'd be viewing things. That's how children do. It's when we start to get programmed with the lustful energies. Remember, even when we're a teen and we start going through puberty and we start having sexual urges, when you really go into all that, those it's not really necessarily a natural process like puberty and having sexual urges Th that doesn't necessarily mean that's connected um because like let's for instance look at the male body i know when i was a kid i was eating enormous amounts of food like way too much food majority of the food being cooked meats all that so what happens when you eat a lot of food male body well the colon expands, the food pushes against the prostate. What's the prostate? That's the G spot essentially for a male. So that pushes against the, G, the, the, the prostate, this G spot, and creates a lot of arousal. It creates the, 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 the movement and the desire for sexual 
uh, experience and for specifically for ejaculation because that that creates the um, uh, like that that pressure, right? So that's not a natural energy that is caused by unnatural forms of consumption, right? So if I go back to you know my experience as a teen. Can I relate the majority of the sexual urges to the enormous amounts of food and and consumption and all of that that comes with it, let alone the sexual trauma that had already been induced through childhood, through programming, through um, all the things you know that a, a normal child in this world will grow up in. The majority of us, not majority of us, have experienced some sort of sexual trauma, right? So that's already in the mix. So to say that just because puberty is happening that we're naturally gonna have these sexual urges, that's not necessarily true. Um, there may be movements of that on some level. Yeah, because there is gonna be an animal uh, energy that will be there. But if we're children being brought up in a harmonious environment where we are connected to our spiritual essence from birth, and then we're growing up in that wavelength and in those practices as they evolve, then it's in my view that the intensity of those sexual urges are not going to be there. They're going to be transmuted. They're going to be moved because we're going to learn what to do with that energy very quickly. We'll be educated. So it's very important we educate children on this. Um, and 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 so yeah. So so then that that sexual purity and innocence will be contained for a long period of time. Like. Coming back into traditional Christian doctrine, because I grew up as a Catholic Christian, right, wasn't really that intense. But the traditional teachings of not having sex before marriage or holding the the um, virgin virgin purity, um, there's a lot of truth to that. There is a lot of truth to that. It's been manipulated. It's been abused. It's been used as a control tactic. However, if we are able to learn how to move the sexual energy as we're holding, uh, holding, not holding, but living the sexual purity and innocence, um, then yeah, living what I've outlined here about, you know, treating all as family is going to be a natural byproduct of that, because you're not going to know anything else. <laughs> That's going to be natural. So relationships are going to be platonic by nature. And so then we're going to be able to naturally access the higher forms of creativity. Because if, if, if that um, lustful seductress uh, energy uh, is is there due to the nature that the sexual creative force has not been moved and the higher chakras and all the the miasmic buildup in the energy body has not been dealt with then um, every relationship is basically seen as a means to an end every relationship will be seen as some sort of sexual opportunity because there's going to be some sort of sexual urge or attraction there's going to be some sort of creative, uh, like a monetary exchange, like uh, say from a business sense or an opportunity sense, something related to money and survival in regards to this relationship. Like what what the, can this person do for me in regards to relation in that sense? And then every other sense, like can this pers person entertain me? Can they, are they, um, you know, useful to me in some regard? That's how the lower nature sees things. So all relationships are basically going, uh, going to be perceived. Um, you know, there will be uh, uh, the true connections will always speak louder than this, but they will still be speaking through the fog of those programs because that conditioning is there. So you may, of course, still come across those of true resonance, true connection. We it's inevitable. You know, we can't avoid those connections. Um, but then the karma of that programming will be laced on top. It will be the fog. So that ha that being healed is where we can then actually perceive the true nature of the relationships, which is, prim is going to be platonic because the higher form of creativity will emerge where we're not necessarily looking about like, what can this person do for me? Or, you know, how can I get something, orgasm, money, entertainment, pleasure from this being? It's more, how can we co-create a higher pleasure together like a musical jam or a business creation that's co-creative, synergistic by nature, win-win situations, you know, um, creating community, creating adventures, creating meditations, energetic exchanges, you know, and it's infinite, it's eternal. But we all we all can see, you know, what that means. I'm I'm reminded 
of an experience. I've had this many times, but I remember one experience in particular where I was singing with a friend and it was almost like I was experiencing like uh, an orgasm, almost like a sexual connection with this person in how we would typically view sexual connection but it was just transformed because we were just singing together and it was like the voices weaving together it's a really beautiful thing you know and I'm sure we can all relate to this in some regard um right so it's so if if we're more disciplined with this type of practice we'll be able to start to see those higher forms of creative experience that are are what's truly being desired in the connection with this being rather than um, the typical things that I've, that I've mentioned that the, the lower mind will instantly go to, right? Like you'll start feeling, oh, I feel this creative connection with this person, but then it'll be translated as, oh, I'm attracted to this person. I want, essentially I want sex with this person. Or I want some sort of sexual intimacy or a partnership or they need, they need to be my, my 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 date or you know what I mean like all that kind of stuff right again means to an end it comes from that separate view so as the energies transform into the higher devotional sense everyone is perceived in this deep devotionally loving way but it doesn't pass through the filters or the damaged aspects of the energy body which create the perception you know based on the traumas or programming conditioning that we're, we're uh, you know, perceiving in our template, All right? So that's just a further explanation on that. But what, yeah, what a profound topic, eh? That's a very, very good topic.